Pete. I didn't know what Gerard had in mind until it was too late. It was his idea, not mine. I didn't know he was going to steal the picture. I didn't know what to do when they took you to jail. It was Paul's idea to blame you, to make you look crazy, not mine. Pete, I wanted to go to the police, but he said he'd kill me. Pete, I'll do anything you want me to. Please. You. Take her out to the car. I think the lady has something to tell you. I know. I heard. Live in a doorway. It's enough to make any guy crazy. Where is Pete? He's okay. We picked up your rose too. He had the painting under his shirt. There are probably a few details left, but we'll get him out of your and the girl. Probably try to pull the robbery off themselves. Was surprised by the night watchman. Killed him. Had Kazma come down to play the part of Patsy. Not the nicest way to get rid of a husband. days later, everything was okay. Pete was back on the newspaper with a big career in front of him. As for me, I was on my way back to Honolulu for an appointment I hadn't kept. I'd even be happy to see Sergeant Quan again. He didn't disappoint me. Why did you have to come back? Don't give me any trouble, Mr. Lanyard, please. Just tell me how long you're going to stay. It's hard to say. Well, why did you come back to Honolulu? I came back to pay this young lady for the newspaper. Sergeant. Nice of you to come down to meet me. Leonard, I didn't come to meet you. I came to talk. I'm hurt, Sergeant. It must be the same new questions. Why am I here? How long do I intend to stay? This is no time for humor. The commissioner can't keep you from entering, but we hope your stay will be short and unpleasant so you won't want to come back too soon. Necessary to fly around the world, that headline would have made me leave for Los Angeles. I came to Honolulu to keep an appointment, but it could wait. Los Angeles? Yes, Los Angeles. I'm sorry our reunion was so brief. Pete Kasman many years. Robbery wasn't his cup of tea, nor murder. He was a pretty special guy. 
won the Pulitzer Prize for Journalism ten years ago. It was during the war while I was in the OSS. Pete was in the hospital. The story called him a homicidal maniac. I didn't believe it. I lost no time in getting to Pete. This wasn't the Casman I'd known. He just stood there and smoldered. And soon I knew he'd explode. Get out of here, Mike. Did you take that painting and kill the guard? If I say no, I believe you. It's no dice, Mike. Even if you could help me, I wouldn't want you to. Got a cigarette? Sure. There's some things a guy's got to work out for himself. Okay. cinch that Pete wanted to handle things his way. I had a feeling it was the wrong way. The next person I had to see was Pete's old boss, George Jensen. Lanyard, don't you think the paper would have stood behind Pete if we'd had anything to stand on? Last year, we sent Pete on assignment to Cairo. He was wounded. After that, he seemed to go off the deep end. Big drunks, brawls. He spent a month in a hospital in Vienna. Finally, we had to call him home. Didn't he tell you what was eating him? Never gave us a chance to ask. The human mind's a funny thing, Lanyard. Something happens and... That's the point, Jensen. What did happen? The newspaper story said that Paul Giraud, the curator of the museum, had spotted Pete and an accomplice stealing a Van Gogh worth $50,000 after having murdered the night watchman. He shot Pete, but the accomplice escaped with a painting. I headed for the museum to see the curator, Paul Giraud. Mr. Giraud? I am Paul Giraud. And you? I'm Michael Lanyard. May I help you? Possibly. I understand you're the man who shot Pete Kassman. That's a rather brutal statement, but factually correct. Are you from the police? No. Just a very good friend, that's all. I see. I'm sorry, Mr. Lanyard, but I had no alternative. I had some work that brought me back to the museum that particular night. I was here in my office. I heard a scuffle and several shots out in the hall. I took a gun from my desk and went out. There were two men standing over our guard. And then? I fired. One man fell, the other raced down the corridor and escaped. The man I shot, as you say, was Pete Kessler. What happened to the Van Gogh? That, Mr. Lanyard, I too would like to know. Kessman had an accomplice. I can only assume that the painting is in the hands of the one who escaped. Doesn't make sense. I'm afraid it makes rather a lot of sense. You see, the Van Gogh was valued modestly at $50,000. I never knew Kessman. However, I take it he must have been a rather remarkable man at one time to have been awarded a Pulitzer Prize. But, uh, But what? Well, the newspapers have printed the answer to that. I don't care what the newspapers said. I think they're wrong. What about me? Am I wrong, too? You know, the mind can play funny tricks. Take Van Gogh. He cut off an ear. Yes, but I saw Pete Casman this morning. He still has two ears. Rush delivery available. Call now. It wasn't likely that I could find out what happened to Pete while he was in Europe. But I hoped here in Los Angeles where he lived, I might get a line on him. 
I talked to a lot of different people he knew, friends and tradesmen. And while they all wanted to help, none seemed able to add much, except that Pete was a pretty mixed up guy when he got back. I had about hit the bottom of the barrel when I met an old friend of mine and Pete's, Charlie Morse. He knew something no one else seemed to know. Pete Cassman had a wife. Charlie even knew Millie Cassman's address. He also added she was taking Pete's trouble pretty hard. Mr. Lanyard? I think you better call me Mike. I feel I should anyway. He talked about you so much. Poor Pete. He didn't do it. I'm afraid I know he did. You see, I was there. You want to tell me about it? I married Pete a little over two years ago. That is, I did when he stopped jumping around the world long enough to be home a few days. And in between? I became interested in art. Gave me something to do. I started working part-time at the museum for Mr. Giraud. That's the man who shot Pete, wasn't it? Ironic, too. He was a fan of Pete's. Read everything he wrote. How did you happen to be down there the night of the robbery? I didn't happen to be down there. I found my key to the museum was missing. I went down to notify the night watchman. When I got there, you know the rest. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it. <laughs> Look at that desk. Just like Pete, huh? Sloppy as he was brilliant. That's the book he'd been working on for the past five years. Even he was enthused about it. So I guess it must have been good. You mean you haven't read it? He wanted me to wait until it was finished. Anna Zeitlin. Is that the leading lady's name? There is no leading lady. The book isn't fiction. Why was your marriage to Pete kept such a secret? Nobody seemed to know about it, not even his editor. It was Pete's idea to keep it a secret. The newspaper has a policy whereby married correspondents can't be given hazardous assignments. You know how much Pete loved his work. Yeah. Well, that wasn't my chief problem. Maybe Giraud was telling the truth, but I had a hunch that he hadn't given me a straight answer since we met. There was still Anna Zeitlin, the name scribbled all over Pete's manuscript. It was a long shot, but one thing was certain. I had to find her. Michael Lanyard is not in the country. Are you sure? I'm sorry, Mr. Lanyard. Please come in. Thanks. Won't you sit down? Thanks. You and Pete must have known each other pretty well. Why? How else could you have known so much about me? You're right. I've known Pete for several years. And you? You know what's happened, huh? Yes, I know. Pete is not as they say. He's a normal, intelligent man. What about his injury? The hospital's abroad. I was the only one who knew Pete then. He recovered from his injury. But 
then something happened. Something back here at home that disturbed him greatly. Did he bring you to America? He arranged for my passport. After Pete returned, he used to come here each Thursday night. Did he, uh... Did he ever talk about his wife? Very little. Pete never talked about his troubles. But I could tell there was unhappiness. Why are you so sure? Well, it was once Thursday night, about a week before the robbery. He told me it was his wedding anniversary. We had some sherry. Pete held a glass in his hand and slowly gripped it. He kept squeezing until it broke. He cut his hand badly. What are you going to do? Find a Van Gogh painting. I have a hunch whoever has it is no friend of Pete Katzman's. If you want a job done right, get a man who knows. And where stolen merchandise was concerned, there was no better authority than Jim Warner. Look, Mike, I don't want any trouble. Heard about the Van Gogh robbery? I gotta go. Somebody's got that painting. They probably try to pass it. Who's handling that kind of merchandise now? No idea. Give it a moment's thought. I wouldn't lie to you, Mike. Honest. I said give it a thought. All right. I know a guy. I'll see him. Give him this. I saw Millie Kassman again. Her story was the same. But I knew that either she or Anna Zeitlin was lying. I checked with several other people and then returned to my hotel. I figured it was time to start adding up the final score. First there was a sack, then the well-placed kicks. It was a tough combination to beat. I knew only one thing. I was too hurt to argue. What happened? Oh. Did you give my medallion to Paul Giroux? He knew you were checking. I gave him your good luck piece. Yeah, I can guess. A guy with heavy shoes. Don't worry about it. He'll be paid off. Yeah, by me. Leave it to the man who wants the job, Pete Kasman. How does he do it? With voodoo? He escaped about an hour ago. There's an extra on the street. I gotta go. I was sure that it was Giroux who had given me the going over. But right now my mind was on Pete Kasman. I figured he'd head for his wife, Millie. That was going to be my first stop. The bellboy told me a man answering Pete's description had just left. And the next thing he said didn't surprise me. Millie had left just before Pete got there. Next, I called Lieutenant Sellers. I told him not to ask questions, but to pick up Paul Giroux or Pete Kassman and meet me at the museum. He said he'd do it but that I had better be right. Now it was only a matter of who got there first, Pete or I. One thing was for sure. I was going to enjoy getting my hands on Giroux and Millie Kassman. Their scheme had almost worked. When I found the door open, my stomach dropped, because maybe that meant I was too late to stop Pete. Turned around just in time. What did you have to break out for? You met my wife. I loved her, Mike. I decided to come back and try to patch things up. With my background, I was a perfect setup. 
give me that gun. You get out of here and leave me alone. I mean it, Mike. Okay, Pete. If that's the way you want it. <laughs> Why don't you answer me? Is that you, Paul? Who is it? Say. In the dark, she'd mistaken me for her husband. All I had to do was follow her and wait. I knew she'd panic. Try to understand. They lied to you when you were overseas. All those things you heard about Paul and me, they aren't true. I swear it. Pete, it was all a lie. Don't you see? know what Gerard had in mind until it was too late. It was his idea, not mine. I didn't know he was going to steal the picture. I didn't know what to do when they took you to jail. It was Paul's idea to blame you, to make you look crazy, not mine. Pete, I wanted to go to the police, but he said he'd kill me. Pete, I'll do anything you want me to. Please. You. Take her out to the car. I think the lady has something to tell you. I know. I heard. We were in a doorway. It's enough to make any guy crazy. Where is Pete? He's okay. We picked up Jarreau, too. He had the painting under his shirt. There are probably a few details left, but we'll get him out of Jarreau and the girl. Probably try to pull the robbery off themselves. Was surprised by the night watchman. Killed him. Had Kasman come down to play the part of Patsy. Not the nicest way to get rid of a husband. Later, everything was okay. Pete was back on the newspaper with a big career in front of him. As for me, I was on my way back to Honolulu for an appointment I hadn't kept. I'd even be happy to see Sergeant Quan again. He didn't disappoint me. 
Why did you have to come back? Don't give me any trouble, Mr. Lanyard, please. Just tell me how long you're going to stay. It's hard to say. Well, why did you come back to Honolulu? I came back to pay this young lady for the newspaper. <laughs> 